I do not want, and I'm, I'm a competitive person. I do not like to lose anything, but I'm hoping that I lose this bet. I don't want to win this bet. Well, I hope that uh, you do lose the bet as well, because I've been involved in a few TV productions. One of them... This way, Alex, if it doesn't see the light of day, the show that we've completed, then I need, then I need to come back on your show and we need to ask why. We need to, at that point, start addressing, I believe, the First Amendment. I agree with you. Well, I, I don't see how they're going to air something that's more than fair from our perspective. And from what I've seen, and I know you're an honorable person, this is a extremely fair leaning towards our perspective because, as you said, you couldn't get the other side to come out and debate. There's nothing but stonewalling. It, it isn't even a debate, Alex. We couldn't even get them to come out and make a comment. The government wouldn't talk to us, plain and simple. They wouldn't talk on HARP. They wouldn't talk on 9-11. They wouldn't talk on anything that involved the government and, and their involvement in any type of conspiracy or whatever the conspiracy is. You cannot get anyone from government to participate or talk in any manner. It's that simple. And people need to understand that's the scary thing, overwhelmingly scary thing about doing this whole show, is the fact that government doesn't have to, have to cooperate. They act like we work for them. And I believe they've forgotten something and we've forgotten something. They work for us. That's the way it's supposed to be. But in this country, I believe those roles have switched now, and the government views us working for them rather than the way it's supposed to be. Well, that's just an incredible point uh, that things really are backwards now in this nation, in this country. And if they do allow this to go on television, which it looks like it's going to happen, is that that the system is so arrogant that they don't even care if we know the truth now. I'm seeing George Soros and Al Gore and Ban Ki Moon of the UN openly say we're going under world government, openly saying it's a new world order, openly stating it's about population reduction, one child policy. LA Times reports there's going to be a tax on owning a dog or cat because they eat meat, which has a carbon footprint. Uh, you've got the global warming episode. We're going to talk about that. I mean, they're really coming out in the open. So is it that they don't have total control of the media, and this, and so you're getting through the chink in the armor, or is it they're so arrogant now, they don't care if Governor Ventura goes out and tells you how screwed you are. They might even sit back and, you know, roast some marshmallows and laugh at us. I don't know, Alex. I, I'm not in contact with any of these quote-unquote people, so I have no idea. Oh, by the way, yeah, global warming is the, uh, is the last one that, that I list to you of the, uh, we do a, is global warming a conspiracy? Yeah, we were both here trying to remember all seven episodes, and finally it came to me, so I thought I'd shout it out. Yeah, Let's go. Yeah, well, you got it right there, because that was the seventh one that, I, like I said, when I shot these things, they were not in sequence always, and so it can get pretty confusing. It was a lot like governing, where you go from one meeting one hour to a completely different meeting the next hour. No, no, I know it makes your head spin, especially when you're really in the to the minutiae. Let's get into 2012, then we'll get into secret societies, Manchurian Candidate, Big Brother, and Global Warming. 2012, obviously, uh, three days from now, on Friday, the huge uh, movie is coming out where Woody Harrelson kind of plays the conspiracy theory type. Uh, I'm, I'm, I know uh, Harrelson, so we're trying to get him on the show. In fact, that may happen. Uh, but what's your whole take on the real 2012 and the serious in-depth research you did and then separately in the show i know you get into without saying too much whether it's real or not the elite think it's real and they are getting ready i mean to me i think the, in fact i wish i was in that episode i've been told i'm not to me that's going to be one of the hottest episodes well it, it is and and uh well, let me just put it this way and again i'm not going to go in and and make it so people won't watch by telling everything that happens but uh, it goes far beyond, let me say this, the Mayan calendar. Now, the Mayans were very intelligent people way ahead of their time when it came to understanding the planets and the solar system and the heavens. They truly were, because I've learned this. Even with all of our modern technology today, the Mayans are right on. Our technology, for the most part, cannot prove them wrong. 
under most things. So here you had a, a, a culture that took place many, many, many years ago that was very, very bright when it came to, to space. And this 2012 show goes beyond the Mayan calendar. It goes to some things that we know are actually real and completely backed up by NASA. And that's where I'll leave it right there because I want people intrigued. I want them to watch the show. And the show will be on long before 2012 arrives. Are you, knowing what you now know, doing the deep research, are you concerned about 2012? Uh, I'm concerned, yeah. I'm concerned over over things that I have learned, yes. I'm very concerned over them. And, I'll, and when later on, when the shows all air, Alex, will, and, and I don't have to try to intrigue a, a listening audience anymore, I'll be glad to come back on the show and, and openly talk about what concerns me after it airs. Absolutely. That'd be a great radio interview. And also talk about how much hit the cutting room floor. You guys have done a ton of work. I mean, they've been working your butt off. Well, we, we, yeah, I've been to, uh, here, here I'm trying to, you know how it works in the country, Alex, when you try to retire and quit, that's when your agent finds your jobs. <laughs> when you, but when you're looking for the jobs for 20 years, they can't find you anything. No, I've been to, uh, I've been to L.A. so many times I can't remember since summer. I've been to Anchorage, Alaska. I've been to San Francisco. I've been to Oklahoma City, Kansas City, uh, New York multiple, multiple times. And I've, I've lost track of a few, few of the other places that I've been to. But uh, the most unique was the thing going up to Anchorage to learn about HARP. Absolutely. And, uh, again, I'm of Huggy which, Bear. Let me interject, Alex, of which I, up until about four months ago, I didn't even know what HARP was. Didn't even know what it was. This has been quite a journey for you. I know your son began to really get you into this five, six years ago. And uh, obviously I gave you some films, and, and, and that helped you along your journey. And then you described it to me at the hotel that now it's like the top of your head's blown off. The whole world's opening up, and uh, it's quite a journey, isn't it, Governor? Well, it sure is, and and the exciting thing that I'll tell people when people say to me, why do I like to study this, why do I like to look at it, because these are things that very well can be real. And when you read a writer like, say, Tom Clancy or Vince Flynn, they're marvelous books, but they're simply figments of their imagination. They're carrying, through, carrying you through on their imaginary trip. I would rather look into and read about real history and hopefully get educated on it so that, we do, that we're not stupid enough to allow ourselves to repeat it, which over and over I see it happening. We, our stupidity is just unbelievable how we can be duped over and over again. Absolutely. I mean, really, a conspiracy theorist is someone with an alternative history view. We'll be right Very back. This is Alex Jones.